आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम निशित कुमार द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू लॉन्च सेवरल डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट्स वर्थ ओवर 42,000 करोड़ रुपीस इन उत्तर प्रदेश टुडे प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू लॉन्च महातारी वंदन योजना वर्चुअली इन छत्तीसगढ़ टुडे बीजेपी टीडीपी एंड जनसेना पार्टी ज्वाइन हैंड्स टू कंटेस्ट लोकसभा एंड असेंबली पोल्स इन आंध्र प्रदेश पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी लीडर आसिफ अली जरदारी इलेक्टेड फोर्टीन प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द कंट्री Christina Peskova from the Czech Republic crowned Miss World 2024 in Mumbai. In cricket hosts Mumbai to lock horns with Vidarbha in Ranji Trophy final beginning today at Vankhede Stadium and in the French Open badminton Indian men's doubles pair of Satvik Sairaj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty storm into the final in Paris. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch multiple development projects worth more than 42000 crore rupees for the country from Uttar Pradesh today providing a major boost to the civil aviation sector the prime minister will inaugurate and lay the foundation stone of 15 airport projects spread across the country worth more than 9800 crore rupees from Azamgarh he will inaugurate 12 new terminal buildings of several airports Mr Modi will lay the foundation stone of three new terminal buildings of Kadapa Hubali and Belagavi airports the prime minister will also address a public meeting in the Azamgarh and visit Suhail Dev State University in the district the prime minister will inaugurate lighthouse project LHP at Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh and Ranchi in Jharkhand under which more than 2000 affordable flats have been built with modern infrastructure one of the key focus areas of the prime minister has been providing housing for all guided by this vision and innovative means to for achieving this has been the conceptualization of the lighthouse project he will dedicate to the nation and lay the foundation stone of several road projects the prime minister will dedicate to the nation about 744 rural roads projects worth more than 3700 crore rupees built under the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana during the program mr modi will unveil multiple rail projects worth around 8200 crore rupees which will strengthen the rail infrastructure in uttar pradesh apart from this the prime minister will also launch several sewage treatment plants and other such projects in prayagraj jaunpur and etava prime minister modi reached his parliamentary constituency varanasi last evening on a two day visit to the state mr modi held a road show and offered prayers at the kashi vishwanath temple after arriving to a rousing reception at the holy city days after the bjp fielded him from the varanasi lok sabha seat for the third time earlier in the day the prime minister visited states in the north east and inaugurated a slew of development projects gwalior and jabalpur in madhya pradesh are among the cities which will be getting new terminal buildings for their airports today we have a report from our bhopal correspondent Prime Minister Narendra Modi will virtually inaugurate the air facilities developed at a cost of around 950 crore rupees in Gwalior and Jabalpur of Madhya Pradesh today. Rajmata Vijayaraja Air Terminal in Gwalior is the largest airport in Madhya Pradesh with the area of about 2 lakh 20 thousand square feet. It will also have a glimpse of history, culture, modernity and antiquity. The new terminal building at Gwalior has been constructed in a record time of just 16 months at a cost of 500 crore rupees. Governor Mangubai Patel, Chief Minister Dr. Mohan Yadav and Union Civil Vision Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya will attend the inauguration program in Gwalior. At the same time the Prime Minister will also inaugurate the Dumna Airport terminal building of Jabalpur completed at a cost of around 450 crore rupees. Sanjeev Sharma Akashwani News Bhopal. In a major boost to women empowerment in Chhattisgarh Prime Minister Modi will today virtually launch the Mahatari Vandan Yojana MVY in the state today. The scheme has been launched in Chhattisgarh to provide financial assistance of 1000 rupees per month to eligible married women of the state who are above 21 years of age as on 1st of January 2024 through the monthly direct benefit transfer. Widow, divorced and deserted women will also be eligible for the scheme. Around 70 lakh women will benefit from the initiative. The Prime Minister will disburse an amount of more than 655 crore rupees in the first installment under the scheme. Today the program will be organized at 
146 block headquarters of Chhattisgarh. The main event will be held in the capital, Raipur, where Chief Minister Vishnu Dev Sai will be present. Bharatiya Janata Party had promised to implement the scheme during the state assembly elections. The Bharatiya Janata Party, Telugu Desam Party and Janasena Party have decided to contest the upcoming Lok Sabha and Assembly elections together in Andhra Pradesh. In a joint press statement, BJP President J.P. Nadda, TDP President N. Chandrababu Naidu and Janasena Party Chief Pawan Kalyan said BJP is coming together with TDP and JSP will help in achieving the aspirations of the people of Andhra Pradesh. The statement said the modalities of seat sharing will be deliberated within a day or two. In Jharkhand, for the upcoming Rajya Sabha elections for two seats, BJP has nominated Dr. Pradeep Verma as the NDA candidate. Party's National General Secretary come headquarters in charge, Arun Singh, announced Dr. Varma's name yesterday. Nominations for the election to the upper house can be filed till tomorrow while the papers will be scrutinized on Tuesday. If required, voting for the Rajya Sabha elections will be held on the 21st of this month. Ahead of the Lok Sabha elections, Election Commissioner Arun Goel has resigned from his post. President Draupadi Murmu has accepted the resignation tendered by Mr. Goel. With Mr. Goel's resignation, there are now two vacancies in the poll panel. Mr. Goel had assumed office as an election commissioner in November 2022. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. India's permanent representative to the United Nations, Ruchira Kamboj, has emphasized the imperative need for immediate reforms to the United Nations Security Council yesterday. During the 78th session on the reforms of the Security Council, she expressed distress over the prolonged discussions going on over the issue. Discussions on reform of the Security Council have been going on for well over a decade since the early 1990s. In addition, world leaders at the Millennium Summit in the year 2000 had resolved to intensify efforts to achieve a comprehensive reform of the Security Council in all its aspects. Nearly a quarter century has passed. The world and our future generations can no longer wait. We must push forward a reform, heeding the voices of the young and future generations, including from Africa. Addressing concerns about the veto power, Ms. Kamboj stressed that it should not hinder the reform process. She advocated for flexibility on the veto issue for constructive negotiations and proposed that new permanent member should not exercise the veto until a decision is made during a review. Pakistan People's Party PPP co-chairperson Asif Ali Zardari was elected at Pakistan's 14th president yesterday, becoming the head of state for the second time. Mr. Zardari was the joint candidate of the Pakistan People's Party and the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz PMLN, while his rival Mahmood Khan Ashak Zai was the candidate of the Sunni Itihad Council backed by jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan's party. 68-year-old Zardari received 255 votes while his opponent got 119 votes in the National Assembly and the Senate. The new president was elected by the Electoral College of the newly elected members of the National Assembly and the four provincial assemblies as per the provisions of the Constitution. Newly sworn in national and provincial lawmakers and senators voted him under the terms of a coalition deal brokered after the 8th of February general elections, which was marred by rigging claims. PPP leader Asif Ali Zardari became president in 2008 and served until 2013, a period in which a U.S. special forces raid inside Pakistan found and killed Osama bin Laden in 2011. Kristina Piskova of the Czech Republic has been crowned the Miss World 2024 at a grand ceremony held in Mumbai yesterday. The 24-year-old Piskova competed against contestants from 115 countries. Last year's winner, Miss World, Karolina Bielowska of Poland, crowned Miss Kristina as the Miss World. Meanwhile, Yasmina Jetun of Lebanon was crowned the first runner-up at the beauty pageant. According to a Miss World organization, Kristina Piskova is a student volunteer at International Model. The 24-year-old is studying for two degrees in law and business administration while working as a model. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of New Zealand, Winston Peters, will be arriving in India today on his four-day official tour. 
Mr. Peters will be visiting Ahmedabad and New Delhi on his first visit to India after the new government in New Zealand assumed office in November last year. He had earlier visited India as Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister in February 2020. In Ahmedabad, Mr. Peters is expected to meet the political leadership of Gujarat tomorrow. In New Delhi, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jashankar and a visiting dignitary are scheduled to hold a bilateral meeting on Tuesday during which the entire gamut of the bilateral relationship is expected to be discussed. As part of the Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat initiative by the Union Ministry of Education, 51 students from Jharkhand and faculty members from IIM Ranchi are visiting Punjab under the Yuva Sangam Student Exchange Program. They were warmly welcomed upon arriving at the Central University of Punjab in Batinda. We have a report. This group of Jharkhand youth will visit different cities of Punjab during their Yuva Sangam exposure tour till 14th March. Vice Chancellor Professor Raghavendra Prasad Tiwari briefed them about the history of Sikh culture and the Dasam Guru Parampara. All the youngsters are visiting Punjab for the first time and are quite excited. This tour will give them an opportunity to familiarize themselves with Punjab's rich culture and social values. Shishu Sharma Shantal, Akashwani News, Jalandhar. And on to some sports news. In the 77th National Football Championship, services lifted the Santosh Trophy for the seven-time beating Goa 1-0 in the final at Papumpare District in Arunachal Pradesh. More than 15,000 passionate football fans thronged the stadium to witness the exciting final. And in cricket, Mumbai will lock horn with the Darb in the Ranji Trophy final beginning today at the Vankade Stadium in Mumbai. The match will start from 9.30 a.m. Vidar will be looking forward to securing its third Ranji Trophy title. On the other hand, Mumbai are 41-time Ranji champions and this will be their 48th appearance in the final of the coveted domestic championship. Mumbai, who will be eyeing their 42nd title, will have home advantage. And in Women's Premier League, Mumbai Indians beat Gujarat Giants by seven wickets in a thrilling encounter in Delhi last night. And today, Delhi Capitals will take on Royal Challengers Bangalore in Delhi at 7.30 p.m. In the French Open badminton, Indian men's double pairs of Satvik Saira, Drunky Reddy and Chirag Shetty stormed to the final in Paris. The world number one doubles combination beat reigning world champions the South Korean combination of Kang Min Hyuk and Siu Xiong Zhe in straight games in the semifinals. Last night, the Indian duo will take on Chinese Taipei combination of Liu Xingyao and Yang Po Han in the summit clash this evening. The Indian Meteorological Department has forecast light to moderate rainfall and snowfall over the western Himalayan region from tomorrow till Thursday and isolated to scattered rainfall over adjoining plains on Wednesday. On hot and humid weather, the weather agency has said that these conditions are likely to prevail over Rail Sima, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and Karaikal during the next three days and in Kerala and Mahe during the next two days. Meanwhile, the Med Department has predicted a partly cloudy sky for the national capital today. And now for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Prashant Kumar Sinha. Thank you, Nishit. Prime Minister Modi's mega outreach in West Bengal hints at separate Gurkha land is the top story in the Asian age. Prime Minister unveils projects for Northeast, says next step is expansion of industries, headlines the Indian Express. Pre-poll booster for BJP as Telugu Desam party back in NDA fold after six years is the cover page story in the Sunday Tribune. Arun Goyal quits as election commissioner ahead of Lok Sabha polls, says the Hindu. Maldives' economic woes deepened as Indians shared Shan Islands is the front page story in the Sunday Pioneer. Bank employees to get wage hike of 17% all Saturdays as holidays, says a report on the Sunday Statesman. DMAT account additions record a new high of 35.71 million in February, according to the Financial Express. And finally, Rohit and companies steer India to massive victory over England. And with that, it's back to you, Nishit. Thank you, Prashant. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to launch several development projects worth over 42,000 crore rupees in Uttar Pradesh today. Prime Minister to launch Mahatari Vandan Yojana virtually in Chhattisgarh today. BJP, TDP and Janasena Party join hands to contest Lok Sabha and Assembly polls in Andhra Pradesh. Pakistan People's Party leader Asif Ali Zardari elected 14th president of the country. Christina Piskova from the Czech Republic crowned Miss World 2024 in Mumbai. In cricket, hosts Mumbai to lock horns with the Darb in Ranji Trophy final beginning today at Vankade Stadium. And in the French Open badminton, Indian men's doubles pair of Satvik Sairaj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty storm into the final in Paris. And with that, we end the morning news. 
Have a nice day. आकाशवाणी से पेश है खबरनामा 